keep paying for infrastructure. We could go on. Plenty of obvious ideas out there. Hiking taxes on working class rural people is not on the list unless you secretly want to retire early. In that case, if you're really sick of the job, go with the gas tax. Democrats are united on one question. Climate change is bad, very bad. As bad as World War II, in fact, existentially bad. We will all die from it. The singular crisis that we face, a crisis that could, at its worst, lead to extinction. If we don't have the bravery to take it on as the most important challenge of our lifetime, then we don't care about those children. A life and death issue. We are running out a runway to be able to fix this problem. People are going to die. Uh, habitat will be destroyed. Seas will rise. Insects will spread. We're like... The world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. Like, this is the war. This is our World War II. So bad, they're running out of adjectives. So what's to blame for this world-ending cataclysm? Well, a new research paper has the answer. It is, you're not going to be surprised, toxic masculinity. That's causing global warming. The paper argues that being environmentally conscious is a stereotypically feminine trait. So men, in response, assert their masculinity by deliberately destroying the environment and hogging the remote. They drive gas guzzlers, use plastic bags, they light things on fire. That's what men do. If we want to save the environment, we have to suppress men. It's like World War II, sort of. Anyway, author and columnist Mark Stein has thought a lot about this question. In fact, he may be adding to the carbon footprint just by his masculinity. He joins us tonight. Um, so, Mark, what do you make? Does this, I mean, this, is this the science that you grew up with? Well, I confess I was at first skeptical. If I understand this thesis, uh, my insecurities about my masculinity are causing rising sea levels in the Maldives. And at first, <laughs> I didn't really... I didn't really buy that, but as I think about it, I think, in fact, it's actually one of the least risible climate science theses of recent years. So I'm, I'm kind of on board with where they're going on this. But, I mean, how did we wind up with a country in which feminists do science? I mean, isn't that, we're sort of bound to get a study like this, right? Yeah, I think, I think, in fact, it's very difficult to tell with social science, as with climate science, uh, whether or not it's an ingenious parody. Uh, it's, it's almost impossible to tell, in fact. But I think this goes back to, I think the important point here is toxic masculinity. They're saying that uh, they, they did a survey here, this is the kind of hardcore science behind it, in which they gave someone a Walmart gift card, and it was pink and had lots of flowery patterns on it. So it looked a bit girly looked a bit sissy, looked a bit milk toast, panty waist. So the guy given this uh, gift card went out and bought a lot of very macho masculine things that melt the polar ice caps. Whereas if you give him something, if you give him, he's so impressionable, this toxically masculine male, that if you give him a masculine type card, he just thinks, oh, that's really nice. And he goes out and he buys a Sierra Club tote bag and saves the planet. This is the kind of social science uh, that, that the higher education institutions of America are spending a fortune investigating. I thought climate science was all about ice core samples, but it's about Walmart gift cards. No, no, that's ridiculous, because basically climate science is a state of mind. So, uh, so that if you want to go out, you can... You can you can go and take tree ring samples in the middle of nowhere if you want, but that's for losers. The big bucks are doing a, the big bucks are doing a survey where, in fact, you decide that uh, what's heating up the planet is men. You know, a couple of weeks ago on this show, Tucker, you had a report that uh, uh, they were introducing vegetarian days in the New York City schools because red meat has toxically masculine overtones. And, and basically, if you, look at, if you look at half the stories you cover every night, uh, toxic masculinity is, uh, is, some, is the sort of underlying subtext of it. So basically, when Jerry Brown says we all have to be worried because insects will spread, I mean, these guys are literally predicting a plague of locusts now. <laughs> and the only good thing about the plague of locusts is that they'll kill all the men. If uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is 
is uh, flatulent uh, Holsteins don't get us first. But between the plague of locusts and the plague of flatulent Holsteins, uh, men, toxically masculine men, will be over and then the planet will be saved. This is just, I, I wish there was a Latin term for government by unhappy, crazy people, because that's, that, that's where we're witnessing now. Mark Stein, it is so, it, as long as we're having a revolution, I'm glad you're here to chronicle it with us. Thank you. <laughs>